Hi everyone, it's the Math Sorcerer here with Chegg. In this video, we're going to discuss the product and quotient rules. The product rule says that the derivative of a product, f times g, is equal to f prime g plus f g prime. If you think of f as your first function and g as your second function, you can think of this as the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. The quotient rule says if you have f divided by g and you take the derivative, that's equal to f prime g minus f g prime, all divided by g squared. If you think of f as your top function and g as your bottom function, you can think of it as the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom one squared. I think that is a very useful way to think about it. Let's do lots of examples. Find the derivative. Part A is y equals x squared times e to the x. Solution. So because we have a product, x squared times e to the x, we're going to use the product rule. So y prime is equal to, and again, try to think of f, which is x squared, as your first function, and g, which is e to the x, as your second function. So it'll be the derivative of the first, which is just 2x from the power rule, times the second, plus the first, which is x squared, times the derivative of the second, which is e to the x, and its derivative is e to the x. And that's actually the answer. y prime is equal to 2x e to the x plus x squared e to the x. Let's do it again. We want the derivative of the first piece, which is x squared, so 2x times the second, which is e to the x, plus the first, which is x squared, times the derivative of the second piece. But the second piece is e to the x, and its derivative is also e to the x. Let's do another one. Part b, y equals x over x squared plus 1. Let's work through this one, solution. So in this case, we have a quotient, so we're going to use the quotient rule. So in our case, f is our top function, so that's x and g is our bottom function, so that's g. So y prime is equal to, so it's the derivative of the top function, which is x, so that's going to be one, times the bottom function, which is x squared plus one, minus the top function, which is x, times the derivative of the bottom function, which is just going to be two x via the power rule, and the derivative of one is zero, so we don't write it. All over the bottom function, which is x squared plus one, squared. Let's check it. It's the derivative of the top, which is 1 times the bottom, which is x squared plus 1, minus the top, which is x, times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x, all over x squared plus 1, quantity squared. The last thing maybe to do now is clean this up a little bit. So y prime is equal to, in the numerator we have x squared plus 1, and then minus x times 2x is minus 2x squared because you add the exponents, all divided by parentheses, x squared plus 1, quantity squared. And we can take it one step further. There's actually a 1 in front of the x squared. So this is going to be 1 minus 2, so negative x squared plus 1, all divided by x squared plus 1, and that quantity is squared. A little bit more work when you use the quotient rule. Part C, f of x equals x plus one over x squared. Let's solve this one, solution. In this example, we also have a quotient. However, we're not going to use the quotient rule because we have a single term here on the bottom. So whenever you have a single term on the bottom, it's usually a good idea to try to break it up. So we have f of x equals we're going to write this as x over x squared. And then we have our plus, and then 1 over x squared. So f of x is equal to, right, still f of x, we haven't differentiated yet. This x is going to cancel with one of the ones in the bottom. So we're left with 1 over x plus, and then 1 over x squared. We want to reach a point where we can differentiate easily. At this point, what we can do is we can bring all of the variable terms upstairs and it will make the exponents negative. There really is a one here on the x. When you bring it up, it becomes x to the negative one. Same thing here, plus bring this term up, bring up the x squared that gives us x 
to the negative 2. Now we're ready to differentiate. So f prime of x is equal to, here we can bring down the negative 1, so we get minus x to the minus 2. Here we can bring down the minus 2, so we get minus 2 x, then you subtract 1, minus 3. Right, you bring down the number, subtract 1 from the exponent. You could leave your answer like this, f prime of x equals minus x to the negative 2 minus 2x to the negative 3. Or if you prefer, you could bring the variables back down and write them with positive exponents. Let me just show you how to do that. f prime of x is equal to minus 1 over x squared minus 2 over x cubed. Very, very nice. Part D, y equals x times e to the x over x squared plus 1. For this one, we're going to use the quotient rule, but we're also going to use the product rule. I went ahead and wrote them both down here on the screen. All right, let's work through this one very carefully. Solution. So y prime is equal to, so our top function is x e to the x, and our bottom function is x squared plus 1. So if you're looking at the formula, the top function is f, the bottom function is g. Okay, so it's the derivative of the top, but wait a minute, the derivative of the top requires a product rule. So now we're focusing our attention on the top, the product rule. We have first is x, second is e to the x. So the derivative of the first is one times the second, which is e to the x, plus the first, which is x, times the derivative of the second, which is e to the x. Let me pause here again. So all we've done is take the derivative of the top, so f prime in our quotient rule formula. But to do that, we had to use the product rule. Again, differentiating x e to the x. Think of x as your first term, e to the x as your second. It's the derivative of the first, which is one, times the second, which is e to the x, plus the first, which is x, times the derivative of the second, which is e to the x. All of this is times the bottom piece, x squared plus one minus the top piece, x e to the x, times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x. We're going to go over it again, all over the bottom 1 squared, x squared plus 1, quantity squared. Let's go over that again from the beginning. So the formula for the quotient rule says it's the derivative of the top times the bottom, minus the top, times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom 1 squared. When we took the derivative of the top right at the beginning, it got a little bit harder, because we use the product rule. Think of x as your first and e to the x as your second function. The derivative of the first, which is one, times the second, which is e to the x, plus the first, which is x, times the derivative of the second, which is e to the x. So that's your first derivative. That's your derivative of your top function. What's left is the bottom, so x squared plus one, and then minus the top function, x e to the x, times the derivative of the bottom, which is two x, all over the bottom one squared. Now we can distribute and clean it up. So we do e to the x times x squared. It's going to give us x squared e to the x. And e to the x times 1 is going to give us e to the x. And x times e to the x is going to give us x cubed e to the x. Then x times e to the x times 1 is just x times e to the x. The last term here would be minus. x times x is x squared, so we get 2x squared e to the x, all divided by parentheses x squared plus 1 quantity squared. So y prime is equal to, let's see if we can combine some terms here. I'm going to write it with the terms of highest degree first. We have an x cubed e to the x as a cubic term, so that's pretty high. And then we can combine the first and last terms. x squared e to the x minus 2x squared e to the x is minus x squared e to the x right, because there's really a one in front of the x squared e to the x, so you're doing one minus two to get minus one. And then we have x e to the x, and then lastly e to the x. And all of this is divided by x squared plus one quantity squared. So a much harder problem than the ones we had been doing, but I thought it'd be a good idea to do something a little bit harder um, just for fun. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out other videos on Chegg. Good luck.